Hey there, my name is James Lee. Welcome to 5149, where I make videos about business, politics, and society. Today, I wanna to talk about the recent rash of independent political channels that I've seen be demonetized by YouTube, at least temporarily, and give my thoughts on why that might be happening, who it's happening to, uh, who it's not happening to, and why I believe YouTube is morphing itself into becoming the new mainstream media. Jumping right into it. Okay, why is YouTube doing this? Censorship seems to be kind of what everybody is pointing to, and broadly speaking, that is what's happening. But it has to do, I think, more with YouTube trying to protect their advertising revenue rather than actually caring about censoring videos that are quote unquote not mainstream. Uh, I would actually argue that in terms of clicks and watch time, controversial or conspiratorial type videos actually do quite well. But since getting their wrist slapped a couple of times with my major advertisers, YouTube has done their best to try and strike a balance between driving views and making sure that those views are monetizable. YouTube is a division of Google and they have pretty aggressive earnings expectations from Wall Street and their shareholders. And guess what, a few days ago, they released their Q4 earnings and lo and behold, they beat their expectations. Good job, YouTube. Yeah, I would say that YouTube is long past the days of broadcasting yourself. They're the new mainstream media. And what I mean by that is that they fully embrace the traditional advertising model as their core business. Advertisers, basically Fortune 500 companies, they're hungry for cash and they want as much of the pie as possible. So they don't want to associate their brand with any content that could actively anger any potential customers. So to do that, YouTube over the past few years has been prioritizing traditional media outlets over independent creators. Based on data collected by a student at the University of Glasgow, the YouTube trending tab seems to skew very heavily in favor of traditional media, especially and perhaps most suspiciously in the United States, where traditional media is given a lower ceiling to hit to make the trending tab because those tend to be the safest choices for advertisers, given independent creators have a consistent tendency to be more provocative and edgy than traditional media. But in line with Google's don't be evil ethos, they also don't wanna come across as bad people who are silencing independent voices, which is why the CEO of YouTube came out with this line of, it's our job to strike the right balance between openness and responsibility. I'll go ahead and translate that to mean demonetization. And to detail how that plays out, I'm going to directly quote a fantastic article written by a blogger named A. Khaled who writes, YouTube promotes properly vetted content on its prize trending tab as a way to obfuscate its darkest corners from advertisers while directly making revenue from it. And in the case of YouTube's least prideful creators, the platform uses them as a hook to stay and hopefully dig their claws into what the platform can extract most revenue from. So to YouTube, it's not about providing an outlet for independent thought, it's about money. They deliberately promote mainstream outlets while exploiting independent creators. It's a bit of a have your cake and eat it too situation, but once again, given the liberal lean of the company, they can't be or they don't wanna be seen as exploiting independent creators. So in practice, they don't actually demonetize videos or channels consistently or uniformly across the board. Looking into YouTube's content policy, a video can be demonetized for content related to controversial issues or sensitive events and repeated offenses could warrant the entire channel to be demonetized. Those policies are extremely vague. And the thing is, I don't know how you can even talk about politics without discussing controversial issues or sensitive events. And the guidelines are vague like that on purpose. It gives them free reign to kind of pick and choose when they want to apply the rule and who they want to apply the rule to, most likely based on what they think the public backlash will be. For example, big political channels or personalities like TYT or Ben Shapiro, they can probably talk about controversial issues and be fine, but if a small channel does it, someone like a Frank Analysis or even a slightly bigger but not huge channel like Convo Couch, they're slapped with demonetization. Like I said, it's not consistent. It's all about wanting to maintain this facade that YouTube is all about independent creators or independent thought while protecting uh, their advertising revenue in the background and then functioning pretty much the same as mainstream media. So what actually happens is YouTube lets the big channels get away with more because they not only generate consistent views for them, they know that if they do demonetize them without giving a solid reason, the public backlash is gonna be huge. But for a small channel, a few thousand subscribers, they see these small channels almost as kind of like a virus. I think they're essentially trying to cut the legs off these channels early before they get too big to control. So the final question I wanna to get to in this video is what does the future hold? 
Well, if YouTube is the new mainstream, I'm confident that other competition will emerge. Uh, it won't be easy or quick because hosting video is extremely expensive and it takes time to build a community that will reach critical mass, but I think that time will come because YouTube, they may seem like an untouchable juggernaut today when it comes to online broadcasting, but we gotta remember at one point in this country, we only had three networks and at one point cable was the only game in town. Uh, changes, they happen slowly at first, but the momentum accelerates until you go from having three networks to having hundreds of cable channels. And then in another flash, 30 million subscribers are gone from cable and onto streaming. So if YouTube doesn't wanna be the place where independent media can prosper, someone else is inevitably gonna come in and take its place. Maybe a platform like Rockfin, who are giving creators a chance to earn more for their work and providing independent free thinking media an opportunity to grow and prosper. Anyway, those are my two cents on YouTube demonetizations. Thank you for watching. Yeah, it's kind of tough for uh, an independent creator because we kind of fall victim to this intersection between pseudo censorship and the advertising industrial complex. So let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, either way, uh, it's tough being an independent creator in any environment. So if you enjoyed my video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. It really helps a small voice like mine. Um, oh, and thank you so much for uh, one Snowy Supreme for creating a subreddit for me. I'll put a link in the description below. If you use Reddit, please join the community there. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what's gonna come of it and what's gonna be on there, uh, but I'll think of something to do there for sure. And always open to new ideas. And as always, I appreciate all of your guys' time and I'll see you next week.